tarplanet.com.au Yeah, I do the Queen, the Queen show. Um, on we, we Will Rock You in London, I do that. But um, on the show, on We Will Rock You in London, there's, there's six guitarists. And I don't do it all the time. I do it probably about 80, 100 times a year. Laurie Weisfield's the guy who's contracted. He used to be in home, Wishbone Ash. Alan Darby's another guy who does it. And Jamie Humphreys, who you know, he also does it. Um, there's about six guys all together, and they're all great players. David Young's another guy. I can't remember who else. Alan Simpson. Yeah, they're... they're, 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 they're amongst the best UK players who play a certain way and it's not really about how many the interesting thing about this is it's not about how many notes you play it's about how you play it's about the the, the note you've got your vibrato your feel your touch there's a lot of guys who can play fast but for shows like that they need people who can play in time who support vocals well who get a good sound can control a guitar all these sort of things which a lot of people miss out on when they're learning Oh, I'm used to learning stuff. I mean, I, I, I probably spent a couple of weeks, but I've, I've been playing, learning that stuff all my life. But to be honest, to get, I think, so you know it very well, so you can do the show without mistakes, you know, three-hour show without mistakes consistently, you, you're foreverlastingly, you know, honing the, the, the skills to do it. You know, I mean, I, people often say they get bored with a, a gig or a certain thing if it's repetitious like a show oh well I know it I can do it I'm always trying to kind of improve it you know and the smallest thing it's not about playing all the right notes is kind of where it begins and then from that point onwards it's all about the control the touch the dynamics the how you're playing with the beat how you're working with other people really really small details that, to be honest Probably 98% of the general public would notice, but they notice it on a level that, well, this is good, but they won't know why. Well, at, at We Will Rock You, we use his amps. I mean, they're, they're his AC30s, and we've got Fryer treble boosters. But to be honest, you can get that sound um, on a, a single coil guitar, generally quite bright. It's, it's, the thing about it is more how, how, how you control the guitar. He has one channel, and at flat out it's really compressed, really dirty. When you um, do the clean stuff, the volume on the guitar will be one and a half, two, something like that. When you do the crunch stuff, it'll be two to four. When you do the solos, it'll be probably four to six, something like that. So, and you're, the pickup selections, you're always changing the pickups. So it, a lot of people don't play like that. To most guitarists, they might as well just have a volume knob that says 10 and nothing else. And the tone control might as well not be there. You know, and I'm not being um, bitchy to other guitar players. It's just, it's a resource that they should use and don't. The other one as well is where people play on a guitar, right? If you play, most people know if you play near the bridge, it's bright. Most people know if you play near the neck, it's a bit more mellow. Most people know if you change pickups to the neck pickup, it's more mellow. But then if you play, a lot of it is if you play funky stuff, you're, you're, you're strumming over the neck itself. It's kind of better if you're playing, um, like tonal stuff you know the clarinet thing do you know that how you do the you know that make you sound like a clarinet you do that um that i mean playing to exactly 12 frets over where you are but not doing harmonics is kind of a really important part of that and brian also plays with his fingers you know at the, the, the end of baby and rhapsody can i give you the mic back a second um if you if you play this if you play the it's okay but it's actually the one finger, you know. You know, it's like that. You know, very, 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 you know, that's a tone. Completely different world. If, you, if you're playing something like this, you know. And you play here. It sounds like, like clarinet, like, it's got that kind of tone, you know. The, Or there. Hopefully, carry on paying the mortgage. Um, <laughs> no, I, I do lots of things. I, I, nowadays, I think to be a, a modern guitar player, unless you've, you've got a really good gig in a band. I mean, I do the show, as I say. Um, I do quite a lot of sessions. I do. I've got a studio I run where I do instructional things. I do people's albums like Adrian Leg and people like that. Um, 
so I engineer stuff as well, um, do this sort of thing, trade show things. I do a show in Sweden with Jamie Humphreys called Champions of Rock. Um, it's basically, I think you have to multitask nowadays and do lots of different things. You can't just say, oh, I know a set of 50 songs and that's all I'm going to play for the rest of my life. It doesn't really work like that. I think you have to you know, pretty much spread yourself around. I mean, I'm lucky that, I, I, I'll give you an example. Um, I come here and do this, I go back and do the Queen show. I did the Queen show just before I came out. I'll go back and I've got some teaching to do and some workshops. In December, I was in Spain doing some workshops. Come back and uh, do some recording, some mixing. I've got an album to mix. So all these things you can do, um, make you more employable. I think if you're just a guitar player who plays in a band, when there's no gigs, what do you do? You know, you starve, and I don't really want to starve, you know. Hey, you. Guitarplanet.com.au